Are you ready, Walnut Creek Church? Yeah. We're ready to worship the Lord. We're going to take a few minutes and fellowship before we get started this morning. So uh, don't be bashful. Greet someone in the name of the Lord. We gathered in your name, calling out to you. With glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Walnut Creek Church. We've got a few announcements um, for y'all. First, I just want to start off by encouraging everyone to continue on with the 2022 challenge. That is 20 minutes of Bible reading each day and 22 minutes of prayer. If you've not been able to keep up with it or fallen behind or anything, um, it is okay. Um, life happens and it is you, you can just hop back into it and finish out the year with a strong. Um, next, I want to uh, remind everyone we've got the Freedom From Debt campaign going on. Um, if everyone who hasn't already turned one in, if you can turn in um, your pledge cards, uh, that'd be much appreciated. Uh, next, we've got the Laundromat Outreach. That is every third Saturday of the month. Um, the next one is coming up September 17th. It is at 1030. If you have any questions or uh, want to know more about it, you can talk to Brother Chip um, and Jeff. Uh, we also have the Foundry Game Night coming up. Um, I'm sure it is going to be a blast. 
Um, Pastor David and Catherine do a great job at uh, everything that they do for the youth, um, and all the events turn out wonderful. If you have any questions about it, uh, it is this. It is Friday, September 23rd. Um, any questions or anything um, you can ask Pastor David or Catherine about. And then we have an axe throwing, an adult's axe throwing outing on September 24th. And then we also have Baptism Sunday on October 16th. And if you would like to be baptized, please um, get in contact with Pastor Kurt. And then we have a fall festival and dog costume on Saturday, October 29th. And I know I'm excited about that. Hopefully, Verna and Heather will be bringing Baxter. I know Zoe's going to be bringing Honey. And we are going to be bringing one of our dogs. Not two, not three, just one. one. So we'll decide which one we bring. <laughs> which one behaves the most. Hopefully. Yeah. But uh, don't forget to like, share, and follow us on social media and our website to stay in tune with our upcoming events. All right, everybody. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. Bye. All right, all right. Well, wasn't that wonderful? I might bring my dog. I don't have a dog. <laughs> By then, maybe I'll have one. Isn't it good to be here this morning? Isn't God wonderful? Hallelujah. Somebody give me a hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Well, if you're a visitor here this morning or if you're online and you just want to fill out some information so we can contact you and welcome you to being a part of us, fill out the uh, card on the back of the seat in front of you or use the QR code. And if you have a prayer request, please uh, do the same. There's a QR code and a card in the seat back in front of you. And also remember to let us know your praise report. Let us know when God's answered your prayer because we want to celebrate that with you. We want to celebrate together. If we've been praying for you, it's awesome to know when God's done it, right? Amen. Isn't it wonderful? And you can rejoice with your brother and sister. Amen? Yeah. All right. Well, let's read this morning Psalm 122, verse 1. <laughs> My phone. I to get my face on the phone. All right. I was glad when they said to me, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now listen, I know this is not the Old Testament and there's not the house of the Lord where the presence of the Lord is. The presence of the Lord is with you always. You've got the same power and spirit that raised Jesus from the dead on the inside of us now. So we can go before the throne of the Lord boldly. So let's be glad about that this morning. And as we come together, we can celebrate together that whole thing. We can celebrate the Lord. We can celebrate his goodness. Celebrate his love and his mercy and his grace this morning. Be glad about it this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God. I'm glad that I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad this morning? Hallelujah. Let's stand together and pray. Glory to your name, Lord. Father, we come before you this morning because you are our God and our King. You loved us first by sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us, to pay that price that we couldn't pay. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for being so good and so merciful and so kind, Lord. This morning, we're believing that you're here. We already know that, Lord, and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. And we're believing that because you're here, that you will do and be who you are in this place. Lives are going to be changed this morning. We believe it, Father. Salvations will happen, Lord. We believe it. Healings will happen. We believe it. Satan will be stopped in the lives of the people, your people, Father. We're believing for those who don't know you to come to know you this morning. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you and we adore you. Amen. Now who could carry that kind of way? It was my doom till I met you. Till I met you. When 
says to keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. You can't neglect the heart. 
I pray, Lord, keep my heart. Keep it, Lord, tender. Keep it, Lord, a heart that you can deal with, that doesn't become hard and resistant, but that it's supple and that it receives the word and it receives that life. Hallelujah. God wants to pour his life-giving, power-filled life into you. His blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for that river of life that we have in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do we have anybody that's been set free in here this morning? Can I hear that? Can you testify? Are you thankful this morning that you've been set free, that the old's been made new, old things are passed away? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chip testified to us this morning with this song. All right, I'm going to need all your help this morning. So sing this along with me, all right? Hallelujah. Now, if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, uh, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, yeah. Now we've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. Now we've all found ourselves worn out. The same old fight from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you've got pain, He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Yes, he is. If you need freedom or saving, thank you, Lord. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, yes. Thank you, Lord. You got chains. He's a pain chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, Somebody testify. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. Yes. You've got pain. Oh, he's a pain. Yes. If you feel lost today, you can look to the Lord God Almighty. Oh, he won't let you down. He's a way maker. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've got pain, 
Hallelujah. If you feel lost. Oh, he's a way maker. If you need freedom. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. Thank you for breaking the chains. Hallelujah. Thank you for breaking the curse that was over us. Oh, we're walking in your freedom right now, Lord. There's no enemy that we face that you haven't already defeated. Thank you, Lord. Glory. If you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Woo. If you believe it, hallelujah. If you receive it, if you can feel it, come on and testify. Yeah. If you believe it, if you receive it, can feel it. Somebody testify. Pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, woo. if you got pain, change, he's a chain break. Lift your hands up, church, and love him, worship him, thank him.
of the goodness of God. Yeah. 
you, Lord. You're awesome. You spoke the world into existence. Thank you, Lord. You're great and you're awesome. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. If you have any prayer request cards, please bring those forward. Now, hallelujah. your name, Lord. All right, if you will stretch your faith this way, and let's believe for this request and all others that even weren't spoken or those that are online. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you on behalf of these requests. Lord, we, put, we set ourselves in agreement with each one, Lord, to see your desire and your will done in their situation. We're believing for healings. We're believing for salvations, for restorations, for provisions. Lord, we thank you so much that you hear us when we call out to you. Hallelujah. So we're thanking you for already answering in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a, a shout of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Uh, so good to see you and uh, uh, be a part of what God is doing today. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, give you an opportunity to, to worship God in your giving with the tithe and the offering. A couple things I do want to share with you about that this morning. Um, you know, we've done, we've started our, our, uh, uh, retire the debt, uh, campaign and uh, we've got a thermometer out in the foyer to show you where we're at on that. So far to year to date, what we've received today so far is $6,800 and praise the Lord for that. Amen. And, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're believing him for the rest. Amen. And uh, we want to encourage you to continue to, to pay your, give your tithe and offering to the Lord as well as whatever you might have uh, uh, made a, a faith promise to do or uh, something, you know, whatever you desire, the Lord laid on your heart to do toward the debt retirement. Um, this morning, actually yesterday, and I shared this with the elders in prayer before we came, yesterday I got a, a text from Dennis Tanner. How many of you remember Brother Den Dennis and Vanna Tanner came to be with us? Um, right before General Assembly, and they preached, she sang. Um, they're missionaries at large, meaning they go all over to different places. Formerly, they were the overseers in Scotland. I've known Dennis and Vanna for many years, and we and Gina and I got to serve as their pastor. Well, he sent me a message, and our, we're still having internet trouble, or you would see the pictures that he sent me. And if you want to see them, you can see me after church, and I'll show you. But today, he is in, um, let me get this right. Kumasi, Ghana, in Africa. And uh, he said, I, he sent me some pictures of uh, a young lady there who is a member of the Church of God, one of our congregations that he's ministering to over there. And she is uh, his kind of his guide liaison with the overseer as he's traveling in, in Ghana. 
and he said, she, he just came to me, and he said, she's starting her first year of medical school there in uh, Ghana, and $700 would cover her entire first year of medical school over there. He said, I was wearing a Walnut Creek uh, T-shirt. We had given them one when they, they came. And he said, I looked down and saw that, and so just something in my spirit said, well, I need to give them an opportunity to help her if they will. And I said, you know what? I texted him back, and I said, Dennis, we'll present this to the people. And if they want to give toward this and anything they want to give, we'll go to her. Uh, we will send it through World Missions, um, through the Tanner Project. But if you would like to give to that, I want you to feel free to do that. Just mark it um, Ghana or Tanner or Missionary this morning, and uh, we will get that this week. We'll send it. You know, or if you haven't been to the World Missions page lately in Church of God, they've revamped it, and it is so much easier to use now than it used to be. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. I think it would be a good thing for us to invest in this uh, young lady as she's uh, trying to uh, become a doctor over in, in Africa. And for $700, that's, that's a pretty, uh, I won't say a cheap medical experience, but it's certainly less expensive than here in the United States. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to ask you to uh, stand. We have three ways that you can worship in giving. You can give here in-house. You can give online with wccmansfield.org. Take action button at the bottom of the page. I think that our uh, uh, iPad in the kiosk is usable because we have it connected to the Wi-Fi in the back. So you can give that way this morning as well. Um, so I'm going to ask you to come as they sing and play and worship the Lord in your giving this morning. In our love, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your bread. this way as we uh, pray over the offering this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, for those who have brought to your house. We pray your blessing upon it in the name of Jesus Christ, your purpose and your will to be accomplished, Lord, your blessing on those who have given to you today. We give you all glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Gina has an announcement she'd like to make this morning, and then um, we'll go forward in service. Yes, I do. I need one of those. I've got some ushers that are going to kind of help me this morning. Um, and thank you. I just wanted to announce uh, real quickly, ladies. There is a conference that's coming up, a women's conference, and I wanted to make it something that um, that you are that you can go to if you'd like. Uh, it's just going to be something that I know that we a lot of ladies have been coming to me, and we you know we were we were been we've been so closed up for the last couple of uh, years that it would be really it, people are wanting to get out, people are wanting to fellowship and and get back in church and. Uh, this, there is a comeback, it's called the Comeback Conference, that the Word at Lakeside is going to be presenting. And I believe in supporting our brothers and sisters in the ministry, and in the, and, our, and our sisters who are um, ministering to one another. I think that that is a blessing. And if you would like to be a part of this conference, uh, it is coming up here pretty, pretty quickly, but it is in September the 30th. And October the 1st, it starts on that uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock, and it's over by Saturday at 2 o'clock. So that's not a very long conference. It's not like a, 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 you're taking a whole weekend. So if you'd like to go to that, it is $65. You can register online. They just passed out um, the little card there where you can have the information to go and do that. I will be there. At, they've asked me to be a part of that. I'll be sharing my testimony there. Um, they're having the lady that's coming in. Her name is Real Talk Kim. That's what her 
I guess her podcast name is, and uh, she's going to be the one who will be ministering that weekend. Um, I, there will be a lot of testimony shared that weekend, uh, and I will be sharing mine along with those others. So um, if you want to be a part, you can come. If not, okay, but prayerfully consider that. I think it would be a lot of fun. And this time, we're going to have Sister Heather is going to come and minister to us in song. And she always blesses me. I know that she always blesses you. Um, she puts her whole heart into it. And uh, we are the ones who are so blessed to be the recipients of that. So uh, worship with Sister Heather as she comes at this time. Are we on? Now we are. <laughs> Amen. I was sitting back there um, when we were singing that song, It's Your Breath in Our Lungs. And two things I was going through my mind and all. First of all, the Lord kind of just stuck it in my mind that there might have been some here this morning that says, Lord, what do I have to praise you about? Look what I'm going through. Look at life. Take a deep breath. If you just take a deep breath, you've got something to praise the Lord for. And the Lord also reminded me, sitting back there, this October the 18th, 42 years ago, was when I took sick, and they told me that paralysis had, had affected the lungs, and that singing was going to be a challenge for me. But you see, it's not my breath this morning. It's his breath. And we do have something to praise him for this morning. Sister Luella requested this song this morning, and I'm glad she requested it because I found out I hadn't recorded this on CDs yet. So this will be hopefully on the next one I can do. But it's an old song, so if y'all know it, sing it with me. I've never been this homesick before. Amen. Are y'all looking for that home? Yeah. Oh, amen. There's a light in the window, the table's all spread in splendor. There's someone standing by the open door, and I can't see a crystal river, so I must be here forever. Lord, I never been this homesick before. Oh, well, see. Savior standing at the door. And this world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Amen. Oh, I like the words of this second verse here. Well, I can see the family gathered. A sweet face is all familiar, and no one's old or feeble anymore. Well, this lonesome heart is crying, I think I'll spread my wings for flying. Lord, I never been this homesick before. Oh, well, see. Savior standing at the door. And this world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for the deliverance. Oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Oh, well, see the bright light shine. It's just about a long, long time. Well, I can see my Savior standing. At the door, and this road is in a wilderness. I'm ready for the deliverance. Oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Amen. Are you longing for that? 
you didn't know it. And it means something to us today. A year ago today is when we were told that we were gonna have to start making some decisions with Gary. Gary will be gone a year tomorrow. But you know what? It just makes me even more homesick. I've got a dad up there and my grandma's up there. I have so much to look forward to. And Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Indulge me just a moment. I, I saw something up here I needed to fix. I was sitting here and I was saying, why in the world? Who has got uh, something in Speedy's basis spot? And then I realized it was me. I had something in Speedy's basis spot. And I, I, can't, I can't stand that, so I just had to fix it. I'm sorry. I'm not real OCD, but I'm OCD when it comes to musical instruments. They cost a lot. You got to take care of them. Amen. 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 And that's his guitar stand that I was had my bass on. Speedy, I apologize. <laughs> so I had to fix that as Heather was singing. I kind of, you know, it's kind of like the dog and the squirrel. I had to refocus. I want to refocus right now because we've, we've had prayer, but there are a couple of things we need to pray about. We need, I need to mention. Uh, many of you know Sister Denise is not here. She injured herself, jammed her leg or her knee. She's going for an MRI today. We need to lift her up in prayer. Some of you know about Sister Linda Pierce. Um, she has had an uh, aneurysm in her aorta, and they've been afraid to do surgery on it because she's had an infection, and they, they, it's very dangerous anyway, but the infection had, would have caused more complications. Well, um, this week it, it started leaking is what I was told. So I went up to the hospital with the family and we were sitting there and, and Connie and Chuck were talking and, and uh, I said, so it's leaking and Chuck said, Brother Chuck said, no, actually it burst. Now, I've never heard of an aorta bursting and someone living. Okay. He's, this is how good our God is. He said it's surrounded by organs and it's got it compressed where it won't, she won't bleed out. So it's just seeping. It's just leaking, but they got to go fix it. And so they did that. And she's doing better this morning, I'm, I've been told. But we still need to pray for her, for her physical body, that she can recover and heal. Amen? Yes. Amen. We've got some others in here that we need to pray for that are believing for things. Some of you. And so I'm going to ask you to stand. And I'm going to ask you, if you need prayer, to lift your hand. Brother Chuck, I want you to raise, or Sister Connie, I want you to raise yours for Linda. And uh, Sister uh, Carolyn, I'm going to ask you to raise yours for Denise right now. And if you see someone with a hand raised, I'm going to ask you just to get out of your seat and go to them right now. If you ain't got your hand raised, now, let me put it this way. If it, you may have your hand raised, but I'm going to tell you, when you start praying for other people, God starts moving on your behalf too. So I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat, move out of your comfort zone, and start praying for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe this is how God's going to move in this last day. I really believe this is what God is going to do in this last day through, through believers who have faith to step out and say, we're going to pray. We're going to lift one another up in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray one for another right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Sister Denise. We pray for Sister Linda. Lord, we pray for all those in this house who need a touch in their physical body in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we speak healing and health and life. And we declare it in the name of Jesus. We speak your word over them. God, we pray for them. We may not know their need. We may not know the situation. But we know a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or even imagine. And Lord, we speak your word of life and health and healing in the name of Jesus Christ over our brothers and our sisters. God, over those who are listening and watching. Lord, over those who are in the house today, in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, a name above all names. Hallelujah. We exalt you and we praise you in his holy and precious and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Well, give him another clap offering of praise. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll open your Bibles uh, to the book of uh, 2 Samuel, excuse me, 1 Samuel 19. We started this last week. I want to uh, get right into it. 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, excuse me, not 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel by verse, chapter 19, verses 8 through 10. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing music with his hand, and Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear. But David slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall so that David excuse me, fled and escaped that night. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you open our hearts and our ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking to us today. I pray, Father, that we would receive what you are trying to implant in our spirit. Lord, that we can walk forth from this moment forward in an, an anointing that is unlike anything we've ever experienced before. Because we're in a season that is unlike anything we've ever experienced before. We give you glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, amen. amen and amen. I don't want to spend a lot of time rehashing from last week, but I do want to tell you that we're, the name of this is the a prophetic perspective, and it deals with the old anointing and the new anointing. Now, I want to I tell you something. God didn't just out of hand reject Saul. It was Saul's fault that God turned away from Saul. God, and I've heard preachers preach this, and I disagree with them, and it's a, it's a point of disagreement that is not major, but, you know, I've heard ministers and preachers on TV, and I've sat and listened to them in-house where they, they've said, you know, Saul was the people's king, but David was God's king. Well, the truth is the people wanted a king, but God called Saul, not the people. There was no election. There was no vote. There was no appointment. God said to Samuel, go anoint Saul as king. Now, he was what we would call today a fleshly or carnal individual, not heeding, or he's like a lot of Christians today, they're just running along, not really listening or paying attention to what God's trying to say to them in the moment, in the situation. David comes along and God anoints him and tell, they tell Saul, you know, God's raising up someone in your place because you've rejected God's word. Because you've, now that again, we talked about last week, there are movements, denominations, churches, and believers who are out of hand rejecting the word of God and substituting their own truth. You get in trouble when you substitute your truth for God's truth. Because God's is ultimately truth and yours is just your opinion or desire or whatever it comes from. And so what I want to say this morning is there's a couple things I want to share with you. When I talk about the old anointing and the new anointing, <clears throat> I'm not talking about that God does not want to anoint every individual who desires to walk in this fresh anointing. Uh, uh, he, he will anoint whomever will get under the spout, so to speak. He's not looking for uh, just a particular set of people from the standpoint of he's choosing this individual over that individual for specific reasons. He's choosing those who are willing to walk in the anointing that he's pouring out today. Because the anointing from yesterday won't work today. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're facing different devils today than you faced yesterday. There's been an unleashing in our world of the satanic and demonic forces that are turning things in a direction and the church is standing there looking and saying, what's going to happen? And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. 
They may prevail against society, they may prevail against governments, but they will not prevail against God's true church. We talk about the old anointing and new anointing. Jesus referenced it. It, it, You can look it up. I'm going to share it with you. But he said, you can't put new wine into old wineskins. Because if you do, what's going to happen is through the fermentation process, those old wineskins will burst. Now, when he was talking about this, you understand, they didn't... They did not bottle wines in bottles. They they, they put the crushed grapes in an old goat skin. Now, if you were the goat owner, you had a herd of goats, and every time they brought in a harvest of grapes, they needed a goat skin, you'd you'd run out of goat skins pretty fast. But there was a process that they would put a old wine skin, when they emptied the the wineskin of its juice, they would throw it in a pile and it would dry out and get brittle and it would become very uh, inflexible. Well, that sounds like a lot of people today. When we're not full of the Holy Ghost, we kind of dry out and get inflexible. We're not full of the presence of God, we become very brittle in our understanding and thought process. But there's a process that they would use to renew those old wineskins so they didn't have to go kill another goat. They would take those wineskins and take the the, the stopper out and they would sink them in a, a, a briny salt water. And they would soak them until they became saturated inside and out with this moisture. And once they had been in there uh, for several days, they would take them and they would rinse them out and, and they were pliable, but they, they weren't yet ready to hold. And they would take butter and oil and they would get to rub that old leather goat skin on the outside until it became very pliable and soft and flexible and, and didn't leak. And then they would take it because it had been renewed. Turn to your neighbor and say, renewed. It had been renewed and it had been refashioned so that it could hold more of the new wine. Because if you understand the winemaking process, when you crush the grapes, it goes through a couple of different things. It goes through a, 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 uh, I won't say a distilling because they don't distill it, but it goes through a fermentation process. And if you know anything about fermentation, if you've ever worked in a bakery or baked bread at home, you understand the yeast ferments and it causes the bread to rise. What's actually happening is within the yeast, there's bacteria, not bad bacteria, but there's bacteria that's reacting with the, uh, there's a chemical reaction and, and it's causing decay. And that decay is causing the gases to rise up and cause that bread to rise. Well, when wine or grapes begin to ferment, they, they, they release gases that cause that wine skin to stretch. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to tell you something. When you get full of, full of the Holy Ghost, he will cause you to stretch. And if you're not pliable in his hands, you'll burst wide open and he'll just leak right out of you. Now, that's not probably theologically correct, but it makes for a good picture. We got lots of Christians running around trying to be a Christian. I'm going to tell you, you don't ever try to be a Christian. You just be a Christian. You either are or you're not. There's a lot of us who've got holes in our wineskin because we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to do the work that he needs to do it in us with that water to soften us up. The water of the washing of the word. Woo, Lord, glory to God. Glory to God for the word of God. And for the spirit, that oil. And we get to a place where we can receive a fresh and new anointing. Okay? Saul was one who, he wasn't in a position or a place because he allowed bitterness. Pride. A whole lot of things. God says, I'm taking my hand off of you. 
taking my hand off you now the thing now watch this because i'm going to preach right here just in a little slot where i want you to understand the thing that would have been redemptive in saul's life would have been to say i understand my failure and it would have been to repent because even in the old testament there there was repentance to repent and bring about a transition from his anointing to the next anointing. Instead, he tried to kill the, the, the coming anointing. Oh, Lord Jesus, there's a lot of preachers and there's a lot of churches that will try to stop the next wave of anointing because they know they, can, they ain't got a chance to catch it because they ain't got the word. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, come on. And I'm not, I'm not just preaching about different denominations. There's people in our denomination. Lord, help me not to be so in the know that I forget what I know. And I lose focus on what's going on and what's taking place. Every one of us need to be submissive to the will of God regarding the season and the time we're in. You see, the old Saul's armies, they weren't causing, he was raised up to uh, cast out the Philistines, but they weren't, they weren't accomplishing it because of the sin in Saul's life and the rejection of his, uh, or his disobedience. And so Saul says, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do. They fight, they chase, they run around. He almost, at one point, he almost kills his own son because of a stupid oath that he made. When his son wasn't around and his son broke that oath, and the people stopped him from killing Jonathan. Along comes David. Man, he's, uh, they sang the song. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. That's what the new anointing will do for you. I'm going to share a story with you. Because I, I didn't get started until 1130. It's 1140. I've only been preaching for 10 minutes, and I've got about 45 minutes of stuff in my head right now. And I'm going to try to condense it. We're, Lord help me, we are in a season. We're in a season. We're, I think we, we're in it, but some would say we're entering it, but I believe we're already stepped into it. You know, when you're entering a room, you're, you're somewhere between this side of the door and that side of the door but I believe we've already stepped through the door and we're in the season now some people are just standing in that spot wondering what are we going to do because there's so much garbage and junk going taking place that we don't know where to go in that room but I'm going to tell you where we need to go in that room we need to go exactly where God tells us to go in that room well I don't know where God wants me to go in that room I'm going to tell you why you don't know where God wants you to go in that room are you ready if you don't know where you're supposed to be in that room it's because you're not talking to God you're not reading his word. And you're not. Uh, I read my word now. So I, I feel it. You're getting indignant. I read my word. I pray every day. Are you listening? Because I'm going to tell you, God has not stopped speaking. If you'll listen, he'll speak. So where do I belong in the room of the season of today? What am I supposed to be doing? Well, some of you have stopped. Some of us have stopped in the doorway because we're not sure whether we can make it in that room. Growing up, as I shared before, we used to go to singings every Friday and Saturday night when I was a kid. Shakota Assembly of God, <coughs> Direct Assembly of God. You probably never heard of those places. That's because their little communities run along the Red River right there north of Paris. Ain't nothing there but farmers. Most of them go to town to work. Back when I was growing up, one of the families in, in the church we attended there, they were hay haulers. Now I hauled my share of hay, but I didn't haul hay like they did. They had four semi trucks. Six bobtails, and the, the patriarch of the family and his wife, they had 10 children. Now, in 1974, 10 children was a lot of children. Now, in 1874, it probably wasn't. But in 1974, that's lots of kids. But I'm going to tell you, he had kids on every truck. They hauled hay. They did it as a family. I'm going to tell you what they didn't do. They didn't haul hay on Sunday. 
They didn't haul hay on Wednesday night. They was at church. We used to sing a song at that church. I got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley and I drink of the bitter cup. You ever heard that song? You heard that song. I see you shaking your head. I don't know the rest of the words I tried singing, but I don't know the rest. You see, some of you need to make up your mind that you're not afraid of that season. And you're not afraid of what is in front of you. Some of you need to get the some of you need to get the Jude anointing. You don't know what that is, but I'm fixing to explain it to you. My grandson named Jude, he's five years old, Chip. You know, there's no reasoning with a five-year-old. I don't care if you're a parent or a grandparent. You can only reason with a five-year-old if they want to be reasoned with. They were with us all last week while their parents <clears throat> were celebrating their 15th anniversary in Costa Rica. They got in on Tuesday, picked them up Wednesday. They were here Thursday. They went to Paris because they wanted to see family and some friends. And so Gina and I and Zoe have been at the house. We went to Paris yesterday to celebrate Gina's mom and dad's 67th anniversary. And her dad turns 86 on Tuesday. And so we were celebrating that. All the family was there. And they had said, Aaron and his family had said, well, we may come home Saturday evening and be with church. You, you know, they've been three Sundays in a row. They've been church with us. That's awesome. But they decided they wanted to stay and see some friends and do some things. And I had told Jude when we got there, he gave it a big hug. And we wrestled because that's what we do, Brother Jose. When we first see each other, we don't kiss and we don't just pat on each other. He punches and I kick and we fight. Because that's what a five-year-old and his big paw does. We have fun. We get in the floor and I act like a juvenile, but it's fun. And so he looks at me. He comes up to me. I've been there about a couple hours. He comes up to me, pulls on my pant leg, and he says, Paul. What? I thought we was fighting again. So I answered him so gruffly, what? He said, when you leave, I want to ride with you. Okay. Well, that's, that's okay. And I, I know. I'm smart enough to know. Now you've got to clear it with your mom and dad if they're coming. If they're not coming, now you can't. But, you know, if they're coming, you can come. I'm talking about the Jude anointing. Hold on. So the day went on, and we had ate, and we had done this stuff, and we, we were getting ready to go, and Aaron said, what time are y'all leaving? We're leaving about 5 o'clock. We're going to go back, get back, you know, and, and, and we went through all that stuff. And he said, well, I think we're going to stay. And I said, well, okay. That's, I get it. That's fine. We're, we're going home. We're going. And I was in the utility room putting the dog bowl up because we had our dogs there with us, and I was, I was doing all this, and the utility room's right off the kitchen at her mom's house, and here comes my grandson, five years old. Walks into the utility room, wraps his arms around my leg. He says, I'm going with you. I said, well, we need to talk to your mom and dad. And he said, no. 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 I'm going with you. I said, well, I don't want to get in trouble. You know, he's five. But he can handle himself. I didn't want to get in trouble with my daughter-in-law and my son. You know, I'm, I'm like... Well, let's talk to your dad and see, you know, because, and so we go into the den and we go in there and I just kind of, I'm not sure what to do, you know, and Gina, she's coming along and all of a sudden Jude looks at me and looks at Gina and says, I'm riding with y'all, I'm coming with y'all. And his dad says, our son, he says, well, Jude, you know, they may not want you to go or, uh, or you may, you may need to stay here because He's five, and he's never spent the night away from his parents without his sisters. And he went like this. Now, he's five, so he don't want the loving and hugging a whole lot. But he went like this, and I picked him up, and he wrapped his legs around my waist. And he wrapped his arms around my neck. And he said, he looked at me. And then he looked at his daddy, and he said, I'm going with you, and that's all there is. <laughs> I looked at his daddy, and his daddy goes, I guess he's going with you. I, I guess I don't have a decision or choice to make, because he's made that decision or choice. 
My, now, my son said, unless you, you know, tomorrow's Sunday, you're all are busy, unless you don't think you can, unless you're worried about him staying. And I said, you know what, Jude, it's going to be your first time to stay without your sisters. And he goes, I'm going with you. <laughs> then he laid his head on my shoulder and wrapped his arms around my neck. And Gina said, he's giving you some loving. And I thought, no, he's hanging on for dear life. Because <laughs> he's already made a declaration of truth for a five-year-old. And some of us need to get the spirit of Jude, and we need to get a hold of our Father's Word that makes a statement, and we just need to step out on it and declare it whether we want anybody else to agree with us or not. Mm. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Some of you need to stand up and look at the devil and say, shut up. I ain't listen to, listening to you. You don't have a say so. Because my God said, mm. I'm fixing to preach in the next 10 minutes, so you better hold on. In Isaiah, he prophesied that Jesus was coming and he said he was wounded for my transgression. See, you see, there's a lot of people that are hung up on their past law breaking. Mm, I got to get a clear mouth for this. What that means is you're worried about you did what you did 10 years ago. If you confessed it, and it's under the blood, it's over. He was wounded for my transgression. The word transgression there literally means the breaking of the laws of God. I've broken some of God's laws, but can I tell you, God doesn't remember them. The devil will try to throw them up at me, but God doesn't remember when I was an idiot, when I was being stupid, when I was being carnal. And when I was being rebellious, what he sees on my life right now is the precious blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. He was wounded for my transgressions. So don't tell me that God won't move the mountains and drain the oceans for me. I'm his child. But you listen to me. I've got to have the determination and the faith to declare the word. To the enemy. You see James tells us. That if we'll submit ourselves therefore unto God. And resist the devil. He will flee. Jesus gave us a clear picture. Of how we resist the devil. We resist the enemy. By the word of God. He was wounded for my transgressions. Don't you come in, up in here accusing me. You accuser of the brethren. Shut your mouth. He was Wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. You know what the iniquities are? You see, if you break the law, that's the transgression. But once you stop breaking the law and you're just walking around and you're not doing anything wrong, you still have the iniquity on you. It's the mud from the sin, the act of the transgression. Sign says, don't walk on the grass. And I get off on the grass. Because I don't care about the sign. I have broken the law of that sign. Now when I get back on the sidewalk. I'm no longer in transgression. But I am in iniquity. I'm carrying. I am carrying the evidence. Of my transgression. Upon me. Again. He was wounded for the transgression. When I broke the law. But that's not enough. He was bruised. For the evidence of it. That I carry around on my spirit, my soul, and my body. Mm. And what that means is when I apply the blood of Jesus, he don't just fix the transgression. He washes away the iniquity and the evidence of my failure and my sin. Mm. Mm. That's why we believe in justification. Because when Jesus justifies you, it's just as if you've never sinned in your entire life. Wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. I want you to put your hands on your head right now. Because that's where your peace starts. 
Because the enemy attacks you in your mind. Wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of my peace was upon him. You know, when, when they placed that crown of thorns on his head, mm, it was covering your peace and your thought process. You see, the, dorm, the, the devil is not just an accuser, he's a tormentor. And he'll come in and he'll torment you with thoughts and accusations and junk and stuff. And you need to get a hold of the word. And you say, no, no, I'm, I'm submitting myself therefore to God and I'm resisting you. And you'll have to flee. You see, some of us can't get beyond our own mind to receive what God has done for us. There, do you know there are people, there are individuals who think God can't save them because they've been so bad? They must think that God is so weak. There are people who think that God can't deliver them or won't deliver them because of their past. But they don't have the understanding of the word because your past doesn't stand before God. Jesus Christ, the Son, stands before God in your stead if you're His. Somebody lost their GPS signal. I'm glad that we never lose connection with God. Let me tell you something. Right now, the anointing I've got on me, I can preach about anything. I'll pull it in and tie it along. I'm telling you right now, you need to get this. We've got to get this. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, my entire being, my body, soul, and spirit has been healed in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will tell you. I know he'll tell you. He's told me. You're not good enough. You don't deserve it. You've done things. You know what I say to the devil when he starts saying those things? I say, you're right. I'm not good enough, but he was. You're right. I don't deserve it, but I didn't buy it. It was just given to me because of grace, of the grace of God through his son, Jesus Christ. He died for me. He rose for me. He ascended into heaven for me. He's seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for me. If he's done all that for me, if he's done all that for you, what makes you think he'll stop short of whatever you need today? Now I'm going to take you to Exodus. And I'm, I'm trying to close. When Aaron was anointed high priest, there's a couple of things that he did. It talks about it in Psalms when they anointed him. They broke a what they call a spike nerd. It was a, about a pound of oil on the top of his head. And the Bible tells us in Psalms that it ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, and, and it, Jewish historians tell us that he was so covered in oil when he was anointed as high priest. When he walked in the sand, he, he left footprints, not indentions in the sand, but oil footprints from the anointing that he had. And I'm going to tell you, when you and I are covered by the Holy Spirit, when we're anointed by him, people don't see us walking around. They see the footprints of the Holy Ghost. They see the footprints of Jesus Christ. They see the, that's what that's what they're supposed to see in us. But there was another thing before that that they did that was very peculiar. Very peculiar, very unusual. You probably read about it. When the lamb was killed, Moses caught some of the blood in a basin. He said, Come here, Aaron. And he took his finger, Moses. And he dipped it in the blood. And he put a spot of blood on the right earlobe of Aaron. And then he said, let me see your right thumb. And he took and he put some blood on the right thumb of Aaron. And then he took and he said, let me see your big toe on the right foot. And he put a spot of blood on Aaron's right big toe. Now that's odd. 
peculiar, let's use that word, in and of itself. But it didn't end there because they took the oil before they broke it over his head. They took some oil, this anointing oil that God had given them the rest of before. And he, Moses dipped his finger in it and he, over the blood, he put that dab of oil on Aaron's ear. And then he took his hand and he said, let me see a thumb. And he put it on his thumb. And then he took his finger and he dabbed some over the blood on the big toe of Aaron, the right, on the right side. And then after that, they broke the anointing over him. Now, you understand, they weren't living in the day where we have the free grace of Jesus Christ to, to, to reach out and claim. They were living under what was about to be the law that God had given to Moses and the children of Israel. But what was happening was not only symbolic, but an actual event where God was covering the high priest with the blood. Peculiarly enough, the blood was over his ear. Now, I'm going to surmise here what I think. You know, we can be distracted by the things that we hear. I know we can be distracted by our eyes, but the Bible tells us that death and life are in the power of the what? The tongue. So what you hear, not only from other people's mouths, but from your own mouth, is important. And you need to get it under the blood. But not only do you need to get it under the blood, it needs to be covered by the Holy Spirit as well. It needs to be anointed. Your hearing doesn't just need to be saved. It needs to be anointed. There's a difference. The work of your hand doesn't just need to be saved, but it needs to be anointed. There's, there's a multitude of people who are content to walk in salvation and nothing else. I'm over time, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish. We are preaching and teaching and living a very selfish gospel. If all we are teaching and preaching and living is salvation for our own self. And it's not according to Jesus Christ because he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everything that we do, everything that we hear, everything that we do, and everywhere we walk needs to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and anointed by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the purpose and the will of the kingdom of God. See, we're standing in the doorway. Not sure whether we want to step into this room. This place of a new anointing, of a fresh anointing. This place that God is calling people today to minister to the situations and needs of today. You can't do the work of the kingdom on the old anointing. Everybody's got a car in here. Raise your hand. Go ahead. Raise your hand. If you own a car, you got a car, you drive a car, you ride in a car, you got a car. When I was growing up, they used to advertise. So this applies to everybody. They used to advertise that you needed to change your oil every 12 months or every 12,000 miles. Anybody remember that? When I was a kid, that's what they'd tell you. Now, they say three months or 3,000 miles. Unless you use synthetic and you can go 6,000. The first time, you see, I used to change my own oil. Back in the day, we used to change our own oil. You pull your car up in a, over a low spot, you crawl under it, and you get your oil pan, and you put it under it, and you pull the plug, pull the filter out. Daddy taught us how to do that. 
Y yo, I shouldn't say this. You go pour the oil in the ditch. I'm not the only one that did that. Now they'll put you in jail for that. Some places. Whenever you change your oil, you understand it has to be changed. Because it breaks down. It gets old. It's not as useful. And if you don't change it, something bad's going to happen. I knew, a, I knew a young lady. She just, she got it. And I, I know ladies who change the oil regularly and religiously more often than I do. She, she did. She drove a, a, a 1976 Corvette. Never changed the oil. Car got hot, locked up on her. She thought it locked up. Man that we work, we work, and we worked in the same area. He, she was telling about it. He said, "Well, I'll buy the car from you. I'll buy." It. He went in, put new oil in. She just let it go dry of oil. There was no oil. He broke it free, got it running. Man, he drove it to work. She couldn't believe it. She thought she'd blown it up. Now I don't know if that was a ploy or not, because about six months later they got married. <laughs> That has absolutely nothing to do with the story except that I found it really interesting that she now owned the car again. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people trying to run on what they got six years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And we're living in a season where you need to keep your oil filled up. And that oil is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's a new and a fresh oil. You see, I don't like change. I don't. I've always used pen's oil. Always, I've always used pen's oil because when I was a kid, I saw Arnold Palmer advertising in his old tractor. Pen's oil. It's the greatest oil there is. You can disagree. I don't care. You can choose whatever you want. I don't use pins oil anymore because now they tell me when I pull my 2019 truck into the bay, they tell me, they say, yours calls for full synthetic. I said, well, how much is regular pins oil? Oh, it's, uh, it's $25, $30 for a change. I said, okay, how much is full synthetic? It's $90. I'm like, I know. <laughs> well, it calls for it. Well, I own it, so I ain't calling for it. They said, what do you want in it? I said, what's between the real oil and the synthetic? Well, that's, that's half synthetic. How much is it? Well, it's 45. Well, I can live with 45. Let's put that in there. There's a lot of us who are like that with God. We want to go halfway, but not all the way. Because the cost is too high. We'll go part of the way. Well, I don't know about going all the way because the cost is pretty high. I'm telling you, this prophetic perspective, you got to get all in. You got to step all into the room. You got to step all in under the anointing. You've got to let God do what He wants to do in your life and through you. Because if we're going halfway, we won't make it. We need to get that attitude and anointing where we make a determined decision that I'm not giving up and I'm not going to cave in to the enemy's voice. I'm going to know the word and I'm going to proclaim the word and I'm declare the word in my situation. By the way, not just in my situation, I'm going to declare it over those around me in the community. Now, I'm going to share this story, and we're closed. The Lord convicted me here a while back. He said, you know, you preach this, but are you actually doing some of it? And I said, well, yes, Lord, I'm doing I, I, I'm not a hypocrite. I don't be a hypocrite. I do what I say. He said, are you sure? So I checked myself. I was in the community here in Mansfield. And I was looking for opportunities. And opportunities don't always come where you think they ought to come. And it was the night of the SGMA. Gina had to stay at the house because our air conditioner was out. and She, had to, she was there with a the guy came to fix it. 
And I called her and said, I'm headed that way. Do you need anything? She said, we haven't eaten. Will you, will you stop just at, at, at Spring Creek Barbecue and get us a couple of sandwiches? We had Elijah, our grandson, at that time. I said, sure, I'll stop. So I walked in. I walked through the line. I, the, the, they were getting ready to close, so they were a little testy. You know what I mean? When it's closing time, the, the workers are ready for you to be out of there. But I walked in five minutes before closing. I said, I just need a barbecue sandwich. And they went, oh. So I go through the line and I pay it. And they say, sit right there at that table. Well, the table was occupied. There was a lady sitting there. But it was the only place. The dining room was almost empty. And the girl said, sit right there. That's the table for to-go orders. We won't know where you are. So I walked over, and the lady was sitting there. I said, can I, may I sit here with you while I'm waiting? She said, yeah, sure, sit down. And so I just started talking. She said, you're eating awful late. And I said, yeah. She said, I got here too late for the ribs. I said, well, when you, when you snooze, you lose. I mean, it's closing time. And she, she laughed, and, and, and she said, why are you here so last? I said, well, I just, just got done with something at church, and I'm taking my wife and grandson uh, so, some food. And, and she said, oh, we got to talk about the church. And, and she's from, uh, she's actually from Cincinnati. <laughs> she, she moved here because she had been in an accident, and the doctors that she needed to recover from that accident were here, and she couldn't get the care and treatment she needed where she was at, so she moved here. She was showing me some of her scars. She said, I, I'm, I'm still in a lot of pain. And right then the Holy Spirit said, what are you going to do? I said, my church will be praying for you. Well, I will call your name out. This was a Saturday night. I'll call your name out in service on Sunday. And she said, oh, thank you. And I did that Sunday. But as I said that, the Holy Spirit says, is that all you're going to do? And so I just said, but if you'd like, I'll pray for you right here, right now in this restaurant. And she said, oh, please, would you? And so I just did the Pentecostal thing. I laid hands on a woman. I don't know if she was used to that or not. But I laid hands on her. And I just started praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, you not only died for her sins, but you took the stripes on your back for her healing. In the name of Jesus, I felt the Holy Spirit hit, and I was praying. I was saying to myself, don't speak in tongues, don't speak in tongues. Don't speak. You may scare her to death. I couldn't help myself. And I prayed for her. Now, I said, I'm going to tell you this to pat myself on the back. This is the way we should function on a regular basis as individuals. Not because I'm a preacher, but because I'm a child of God sharing the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere I go. Every one of us. I gave her a card. I told her to come see us. I hadn't seen her yet. Whether she comes or not is irrelevant. What's relevant is that we walk in an anointing that God has called us to walk in in this season, in this day. And we're going to have to do it out there every day. I'm going to ask you to stand. You may say, well, I, I, I am. I, Pastor, I'm trying to walk in that anointing. I'm, I, I'm believing. I'm, I'm receiving. I, I, I'm not saying you're not. But I have to preach what the Lord puts on my heart. And I want to admonish some of you that you need to begin to declare and proclaim His Word. Some of you already are. I'm not saying you're not. But for those of you who haven't started doing that, you need to find the Word. You need to find the truth of God in this, in this Bible and begin to speak it forth into your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. If it's over your lost loved ones, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, 
You need to find the passages. I'm going to tell you what you need to look for. You need to look for those passages that talk about household salvation. Now, you can argue about that, but I'm going to tell you, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can I tell you, in the New Testament, there was a jailer who got saved because Paul and Silas did demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't just the jailer, it was his household. There was a man by the name of Cornelius who gave alms and did right before God, and Peter came and preached, and the Holy Spirit fell on him and his household. You can affect those that are related to you. I'm talking about a new anointing. Now, you can't make the decision for them, but you can, you can be so full of the Holy Spirit that they can't stay away. You can pray with passion and power where God moves. I'm telling you right now, you need to wrap your arms around our Heavenly Father and you need to lock your legs around His waist and you need to say, I'm going with you. I'm walking with you. I'm, I'm making my stand right here and right now. And it is with you. And I'm going to walk in your anointing and your authority and your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you are faithful and you are true. Lord, I declare over this congregation that we will receive your word. It will take root and produce fruit. It will take root in, and begin to multiply. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold in this place today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're ready to walk under that anointing right now. I want you to lift your hands to him. And I want you to, in your way, just say, Lord, I surrender to you in this moment. For this anointing. For this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to walk in your anointing. For this day. For this hour. For this season. I'm going to speak your word. I will declare it. And I will proclaim it. Into my situation. In this season. And dead things will come to life. And walls. That the enemy has built. Will come crumbling down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Doors that have been jammed shut. By the enemy, you will bust open and we will walk through because we will declare and proclaim your word in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in his holy, precious name. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just give him praise right now. <clears throat> Worship him and speak to him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we will walk in your new anointing. God, for this season and for this time, Lord, we will be as the sons of Issachar who had understanding to know what to do in this season that we're facing and we're living. We give you all glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for being here. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a great rest of the or, or week. Have a great week. Uh, enjoy your Labor Day for those of you who are off tomorrow. Walk in His anointing in Jesus' name.